This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, she is a 65-year-old lady who has undergone cataract surgery about a month back somewhere else and uh, she is not seeing well the reason being persistent coronary edema. And she's on treatment with some hypertonic saline eye drops and steroids but nothing is improving. So the first message from this case would be whenever we have unexplained persistent coronary edema always do load desmond membrane detachment and the best way to look at it would be to do an antisegment OCT the coronal OCT clearly shows a swollen cornea and a detached membrane in this area now if you look at the clinical picture now this is the area where it is detached this is the edematous area and uh, unfortunately it's starting exactly from the center of the eye to all the way down inferiorly so we have an inferior desmond detachment and it's fairly large and it is quite long standing now already the four weeks are up so the real challenge is whether it is going to reattach and what are the strategies to ensure that my plan is to use gas to provide the tamponade this ensures a long term tamponade and hopefully that would help us to uh, reattach the desmond membrane So I would prefer always to perform an inferior adductomy before putting in the cast. Now the question is can we manage this with just air? In all inferior detachments we require tamponade which is long time and unfortunately unlike the superior detachments the inferior detachments are less well supported because in the supine position the gas bubble invariably moves up and we have to rely on the patients to lie down supine for a considerable long time for us to have the necessary tamponade effect my preference in all the inferior detachments is to use the gas in a non expansile concentration and if one can use other sf6 or c3f8 in this case i'm going to use the c3f8 because it was available to me at that point okay now before i do anything i would like to do the inferior adductomy first and choosing the location is critical because i would not want to go in the area where the desmond is already detached because that would again carry the risk of enlarging the detachment so i'm avoiding that area of where the coronary edema is there and i'm going to take the area just beside it so i'm sitting temporarily and this would be around 5 o'clock the trick to get the incision for adductomy is that it has to be very short incision it has to be slightly posterior and this is critical if you have a very long incision then it's very difficult to go and catch the base or root of the iris so the incision is done now i'm using a forceps to pull the iris out and then the adductomy is done now should i fill the gas with the same chamber with the same incision i'm trying to do that but unfortunately i'm unable to pass the cannula simply because the cannula is going underneath the adductomy the ac is become flat so there's a reason i need to make another incision for the introduction of the gas i can introduce the gas directly with a syringe with the needle itself without making any incision but somehow i find that it always comes out so there's a reason i always prefer to make another incision and the concentration which i'm going to use for c3f8 is 12% and not the recommended 14% simply because many times i find that even when using 14% which is supposed to be non expansile concentration i find sometimes the gas bubble does expand so to be on the safer side i'm using 12% c3f8 gas here so i'd always prefer to put a suture to the incision through which adductomy has been done simply because this incision is slightly shorter and may not have the valvular effect so i'm going to close this incision using a tenon vicryl suture now how do we load it so this is a 5 ml syringe the gas is drawn up to 0.6 ml and then the air is withdrawn to make it 5 ml 0.6 ml in 5 ml is equal to 12% concentration and i am going to inject the gas through the new incision which i have created so to prevent the gas from coming out i am just occluding the port by keeping the cannula oblique and i am just waiting there for a couple of minutes for the gas to pressurize the chamber and hopefully this is going to reattach the membrane because the moment i come out there is always going to be escape of some gas my goal is to ensure that as when i close the eye i want to have at least 80% chamber fill with the gas so after waiting for about 3 minutes i come out and the chamber is still filled with the gas 
uh, antibiotic drops are placed and the eye is patched. Now, these are the first day post-op pictures. The cornea still is steamy. The chamber is filled to about 60% by the gas bubble. And these are the OCT pictures. The patient is advised to lie in the supine position as much as possible and is asked to follow up after four days. It's mandatory that we check the intraocular pressure at every visit. The first day, the pressure was 16 and the uh, patient was comfortable. And these are the subsequent follow-up pictures. And over a period of time, the decimal membrane has completely attached and the gas bubble has begun to shrink. So, a few key points here. When we're using a gas as a tamponade, I would always prefer to do an inferior reductomy to prevent any pupillary block on raised pressure. And in cases of inferior decimal detachment, I would always prefer the gas over air bubble on the contrary, if we had a superior decimal member attachment, I would have just done away with air itself. The third reason uh, for gas here is this is a long-standing decimal detachment, more than four weeks. So maybe in these cases, it would be require a slightly long-term tamponade. And that's why my preference is gas here. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.